Welcome. In this tutorial, we will be discussing how to determine the optimal sample size to provide us with an acceptable margin of error. Obviously, in real life, the sample size might be constrained by factors such as limited resources, availability of respondents, time, or money. But often it is possible to specify a sample size for a research project, and it is useful to know how to calculate the optimal sample size to obtain good results. You may recall this is the formula we used to construct confidence interval estimates when sigma was known. Remember the part of the formula after the plus and minus sign was the margin of error. So the formula in its most basic form was x bar plus and minus a margin of error. So three components were used to determine the margin of error. Z the z value, sigma, and little n the sample size. Written as a formula, the desired margin of error, let's call it E, is equal to Z subscript alpha divided in half times sigma over the square root of little n. Now, if we want to determine the sample size little n, then we must solve this equation for little n. So the formula becomes the square root of n is equal to Z times sigma divided by E. You see, this is algebraically the same, but now instead of solving for e, the margin of error, we are solving for n. Now what remains is to square both sides of the equation, and we get the final formula for determining the sample size. Here it is in the green box. Little n is equal to z squared times sigma squared divided by e squared. This formula will give us the appropriate sample size for a desired margin of error and a chosen level of confidence. Let's say we would like to sample a group of students to determine their grades on a statistics exam. We would like to calculate the optimal sample size for a desired margin of error of 5 points and a 95% confidence interval. Remember, the z-value for a 95% confidence interval is 1.96. We have demonstrated how this is calculated in previous tutorials on confidence interval estimation. And we know from previous research on grade distributions that sigma is 15 points. So sigma is known and given as equal to 15. So now we are ready to calculate the sample size necessary to give us a 95% confidence interval with a 5-point margin of error. We have the three numbers we need to calculate the sample size, z, sigma, and e. So let's plug them in the formula and see what we get. 1.96 squared times 15 squared divided by 5 squared, and that gives us 864.36 divided by 25, which is 34.57. So we would need to take a sample size of 35. Whenever we calculate the sample size, we always round up to oversatisfy the criterion. So the next integer value would be a sample size of 35. Now let's see how we would determine the sample size for a proportion. Remember, the general form for an interval estimate for the population proportion is p bar plus or minus some margin of error. And this translates into p bar plus and minus z times the standard error for p bar, which is the square root of p bar times 1 minus p bar divided by little m. Therefore, e, the desired margin of error for a proportion, is z times the square root of p bar times 1 minus p bar divided by little n. Now solving this equation for little n, as we did before, we get the following formula for determining the sample size. n is equal to z squared times p bar times 1 minus p bar divided by e squared. This is the formula we would use to determine the optimal sample size for a proportion. So let's say we would like to estimate the true proportion of hot dogs ordered at a baseball stadium to within a margin of error of 0 0.025 with 95% confidence. Remember, Z is 1.96 for 95% confidence. Let's use sample results that we have obtained previously and therefore use a p-bar of 0.65. So using the formula for determining the sample size for a proportion, we get n is equal to 1.96 squared, right, that's z squared, times p bar, 0.65, times 
1 minus p bar or 0.35 divided by 0.025 squared which is 0.8739 divided by 0 0.000625 which is 1398.24 we would usually round that up to the next integer which is 1,399, but for convenience sake, we would say the optimal sample size is 1,400. So to get sample results that we can be 95% confident in with a 0.025 margin of error, we would need to sample 1,400 people. If we are willing to increase the margin of error, then we could reduce the sample size. It is always a trade-off. The more confidence we want in the interval, the larger the sample size must be. And the less margin of error we are willing to accept, the larger the sample size must be. That concludes this tutorial on determining the sample size. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you learned something.